हाय फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक तो हमारा आज का वीडियो है भारत पर सवाल उठा रही थी इंग्लिश प्रेमी पत्रकार भड़के एस जय शंकर ने निकाल दी सारी हेकड़ी अरे वाह चलिए शुरू करते हैं Define success. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, Caitlin. Hello, um, I'm Caitlin. I'm from Australia, um, and I'm part of <laughs> Since the. Since you mentioned an Australian, I wanted one. Um, I'm part of the Ricina Young Fellows Program. Um, I would like to know. Um, you you mentioned recently that the multiple personalities of a, a Hindu god um, equated to the relationship of the god plus France. You said when they meet, suddenly everything starts to work. I would like to hear you speak a little bit more about that, unpack it, and then talk about what priorities you see for the Quad Summit this year. That's a very long question, but maybe a few few priorities only, sir. Uh, okay, let's go with my friend, uh, Mohammed. Uh, okay, I would like to start by saying thank no, you. No, no context question. Th- no, thank you for organizing Raisina and inviting us. Thank you. Okay, so my question is about BRICS. Uh, last year, there was a, a, an expansion of BRICS that included some countries, included, including yeah, yeah, Egypt, sure. my country. So what were the standards of choosing the new countries? What is the BRICS trying to achieve? And should uh, the BRICS have a, a secretary? Where, where are you from? Egypt. Egypt. He's a diplomat from Egypt. Yes. Okay. Okay, so, it's a good question. What were the standards and... And what were the criteria, right? Yes. So, uh, what, no, 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 what, no, no, what, what are standards? What are you trying <laughs> got to it. achieve? We've got it. We've got, got it. it. We've got the question. Great question. Okay. Next. You know, I am, I am, I am tempted to give it to Christoph. So, Christoph, you've been standing there patiently. Uh, go ahead with your question, but don't make it predictable because I know what you're going to ask. Now, try to surprise me. Yeah, I try. I would like to congratulate on the term um, cultural rebalancing. And, observation thank you and um, this is the my, my question goes a bit maybe surprising way um, every great great power every rising power since Germany in the 30s to um, let's say China in the early 2000s uh, basically made itself prominent by the means of sports and the games and Olympic games do you think sports would be part of um, India's also role and presence yeah. in the world it will be so so is that there no can i take one more i can take one more okay riyan thank you so much keep this you know you had that you had a look on your face that compelled me to give it to you <laughs> so my question is regarding the indian diaspora that you will find uh, in all corners of the world they've achieved a huge amount of success in multiple fields recently as uh, political leaders so i'd like to ask how do you see the indian diaspora and people of indian origin contributing to your vision of bharat the indian diaspora and the birth of bharat in the vision of bharat right have you have you engaged with them on the vision of bharat the indian diaspora no no i i still will finish this and okay okay go ahead uh, no should we we can stop here we'll we'll take one, one more round, round? one last okay good okay so okay then we have uh, to do one more round so uh, uh i think the first question was after the elections uh what would you define as success right mm-hmm. so first of all thank you uh, that uh, you are figuring out what the direction of the elections is going to be that's very very perceptive and wise of you uh, and uh, what would i see as success that so look uh, the last 10 years i think in many ways we have contributed more we have been more visible we have tried to shape things more 
we have taken more responsibility and i think every one of those aspects and i can give you examples for each one of them uh, each one you know they would grow uh, but sometimes it's it's good to put things in some kind of number uh, and uh, the fact is that uh, today we are a shade below 4 trillion dollars mm-hmm. we would be almost double that uh, by the time we finish the next term mm-hmm. so if you look in terms of resource you know and what this people use this gdp number as a as a marker okay it it carries a lot of uh, implications you know it means your trade will become bigger it means your investments would be more it means your influence would be greater your overall weight goes up in the in this system so i would say in many ways that uh, the the you know by the time we reach the end of the decade uh, uh, def- i mean it's it's very clear we would be the third largest economy but more than that some of the big changes which are taking place in the world and to me as i said reglobalization you know resilient supply chains the idea of a global workplace where there's mobility where new businesses you know the chips the semiconductors the batteries the electric mobility the renewables all of these would require a very different kind of international economy and it's there that you know we can bring our human resources really into play and to me when i uh, you know conceptualize the world ahead these are to me the new factors of change and that's something i have uh, written about uh, in the book as well uh, on the on the quad you know my, the analogy uh, analogies are meant to be useful not always literal uh, but the idea was that you know uh, i i find it as someone who's been uh, you know with the quad all through uh including the you know the the first attempt uh i find quad actually very comfortable to work with i mean my quad colleagues uh there's a lot that we share in our way of work i mean bear in mind culturally we are very different but we are all deeply democratic societies market economies pluralistic in many ways able to argue out uh, positions put you know thanks in a in a very uh, direct fashion to each other so there is a certain comfort which has actually enabled quad to ramp up very very significantly in a very short space of time uh, and uh, yeah, i when you know when i look ahead i do see it as one of the principal mechanisms uh, uh, of consultation and policy making in respect to the indo pacific uh on brics and uh, you know the standards criteria yes there were standards and criteria these were discussed in great detail uh for various reasons it was not made public uh, but obviously the standards were good which is why we have egypt <laughs> uh, uh and uh, uh the uh the there were certain specific issues which were considered while taking the decision but there was a broad alignment you know do these countries align with the uh, with the nature of brics with the uh, positioning of brics the the sort of uh, thinking of brics and i i think uh, that was the overall uh, overarching criteria you know thinking which really guided the selection of members bahut hi acha tha dekhiye isme maze ki baat ye hai ki बहुत सारे क्वेश्चंस उन्होंने लिए थे सारे क्वेश्चंस को नोट डाउन कर लिया था फिर रिस्पॉन्ड किया था एक एक करके जो पहले लेडी थी वो कह रही थी कि इलेक्शंस के बाद आप क्या करेंगे और जयशंकर जी का ये रिस्पॉन्स था कि इलेक्शंस के बाद अगर मतलब अज्यूमिंग कि हम जीतेंगे मतलब बीजेपी जीतेगी हमारा जी ऑलमोस्ट डबल हो जाएगा अगर अभी चार के करीब है तो आठ हो जाना चाहिए बाय द टाइम्स थर्ड टर्म मोदी जी का ख़त्म होता है ये भी कहा कि बाय द एंड ऑफ द डेकेट मतलब 2030 तक तो डेफिनेटली हम लोग थर्ड लार्जेस्ट इकॉनमी हो जाएंगे 
दुनिया ये यूज़ करती है इस चीज़ को मार कर कि भाई आप कहाँ तक पहुँचे हो मगर डेफिनेटली ये एस्टिमेट है हमारा कि हम डबल हो जाएगी हमारी इकानमी जब तक यू नो मोदी जी का अगला टर्म जब तक ख़त्म होता है उसके बाद वो कह रहे हैं कि ऑब्वियसली हम जिस जिस तरीके की चीज़ें बनाएंगे वो वो होंगी जो आज के वर्ल्ड को चाहिए जैसे सेमी कंडक्टर्स चाहिए तो हम वो चीज़ें बनाएंगे जो आज के वर्ल्ड को चाहिए और इंडिया में वो मैन्युफैक्चर होंगी और आगे जाएंगी वो भी अच्छा था उसके बाद उन्होंने लेडी ने दूसरी पूछा था क्वाड के बारे में तो नहीं मुझे लगा गॉड बोल रही है मगर वो क्वाड की बात हो रही थी क्वाड में जयशंकर जी कह रहे हैं कि जो भी चार कंट्रीज़ हैं वो आपस में काफ़ी फ्रेंडली हैं उनका एक ही माइंडसेट है डेमोक्रेसीज़ हैं उनमें फ्रीडम है और वो देखते हुए बहुत ही अच्छे तरीके से उनमें कार हो रहा है फॉर पैसिफिक पैसिफिक मतलब इनडायरेक्टली अगेंस्ट चाइना क्योंकि क्वाड का पर्पस ये था कि कैसे चाइना को काउंटर किया जाए चाइना के साथ ही जापान है उस ऑस्ट्रेलिया है और इंडिया है तो इन तीनों कंट्रीज़ ने मोस्टली चाइना को कंटेन करना है और साथ में यूएसए जिसके शिप्स इधर उधर घूमते रहते हैं चाइना के पास तो ये था फिर ब्रिक्स के बारे में उन्होंने ब्रिक्स में भी यही कहा कि जो जो हमारी आइडियोलॉजी से बिलीव करते हैं वो कंट्रीज़ को हमने एक्सपैंड किया है और यही हमारा मेन पॉइंट था तो काफ़ी अच्छा है और ऐसे ना डायलॉग में लोग आ रहे मेरे को लग रहा था ये सारे यंगस्टर्स हैं जिनको अपॉर्चुनिटी दी थी कुछ पूछने के लिए और वो पूछ रहे हैं पहली वाली लेडी मुझे पता नहीं मगर जिस तरीके से बोल रही थी मुझे लग रहा था शायद वो इसराइल से हैं तो आप बताइए वो कहाँ से हैं बट काफ़ी अच्छा है काफ़ी अच्छा है कि ये सब डायलॉग हो रहे हैं और जयशंकर जी की सोच पता लग रही है इंडिया विच इनडायरेक्टली इंडिया की सोच है और जयशंकर जी ने कुछ कुछ बातें अपनी बुक में भी लिखी हुई हैं तो बहुत अच्छा था वेरी नाइस आप बताइए इसमें आपके क्या विचार हैं और फिर चलते हैं मिलेंगे अगले वीडियो में टेक केयर बाय बाय तो अगर आप मेरे इस चैनल पे नए हो तो जल्दी से सब्सक्राइब के बटन को हिट करो और बेल आइकन को क्लिक करो ताकि आपको मेरा जब नया वीडियो में लगाऊं आपको उसके बारे में जल्दी से पता चल जाए